Welcome once again to our technology, business, and law YouTube video series. My name is Christopher Neufeld of Neufeld Legal, and I am a tech lawyer who is today going to discuss the importance of independent contractor agreements in the technology sphere. Now, I always like to refer to one of the primary I call them whipping boys in the failure to appropriately contract area. And that is our favorite two twins, the Winklevoss twins. And why I refer to them is when they were dealing with the initial um, technology creation that would be the genesis for Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg, they thought they could take advantage of Mark and others and utilize their skills, technology knowledge, inputting work, and do that without really paying them or providing them with any contract. So without having a contract in place, they nevertheless found themselves with a contractor, so to speak, who did work for them, but also took those very same ideas, or at least they claim to have taken those same ideas and developed his own platform, which would go on to become Facebook. And with the Facebook platform, Zuckerberg became a multi-billionaire um, with a net worth of uh, anywhere between 65 and $75 billion in even when you hear this, it might well have gone up from there. And meanwhile, the Winklevoss twins ended up settling with Facebook for a mere $65 million with respect to the concept. But from Facebook's standpoint and from Mark Zuckerberg's standpoint, especially where Facebook has a market cap of anywhere between $350 and $550 billion, a $65 million settlement is not all that much. Nevertheless, proceeding back to what the Winklevoss twins or anyone else could have done and what they you, you should be doing when you engage programmers, coders, anybody really who's going to have a role within your company and the development of your technology is to have appropriate contractual arrangements in place. And the reason for doing this is so that you retain all the output and all the work that is being generated and developed to the extent that that is possible. So one of the key documents you're gonna be looking at is an independent contractor agreement because it's the independent contractor agreement that provides uh, a degree of control and protection to yourself as the innovator, the um, overseer of all the developments that are going on. So not only can they not exploit those developments elsewhere, but they're constrained in how they can discuss and talk about those innovations, as well as providing an appropriate compensation system in place so that whatever their work is that they are doing, they have contractually agreed to the degree of compensation that is stated in the agreement. Now, as with any contractual agreement, they are not, rarely can you say that they are 100% airtight, but they do provide a great um, legal barrier to challenges further down the road. And in most cases, can be strongly defended and protect yourself against anything but uh, the most egregious of situations. So what are you looking for in an independent contractor agreement that is so important? Well, 
the first thing is you want to have that creation of a contract so that there is an understanding as to what the individual who is engaged by yourself is um, performing and what you are providing them with for that performance. So the compensation, this could even be a commission, future rights to royalties, uh, some minor monetary payments right now, a range of things, but there has to be that consideration going back. So because there's three core principles, the offer, the acceptance, and the consideration. Now, the other important thing is when you have the contract, you have to be ensuring that the individual is assigning all rights with respect to all the work and the concepts that they're developing to yourself as the business. And so that they cannot then go back and replicate that. There's certain things that might already be there drawing upon that they cannot confer upon yourself. But to the degree they can confer stuff on your, on your company, you want to take as much of that as possible, lock it down, and make sure that it cannot be replicated by them in another commercial venture. Similarly, you want to constrain how they might be able to use that in future enterprises other than your own because you want to have that kind of control so that they can't simply go and say I'm going to start doing work from scratch for somebody else. Now, as always, there's limitations with all this. However, by having the agreement in place, you have sort of a hammer to try to prevent them from doing that, especially where there is cons appropriate consideration being provided to them for what they have done for the work that they have provided you with. In the absence of that, you could be find yourself in the same position as the Winklevoss twins did where Mark Zuckerberg went on and created a completely more powerful platform that completely dwarfed the college platform that the Winklevoss twins had thought of conceiving. And you could find yourself with somebody else taking your great idea and the work of other people to exploit for their own benefit. And you won't necessarily have a lot of rights, if any, with respect to that. Especially given the cost of the legal fight that would be involved and the fact that you might have done other things beyond not having a contract insufficiently so as to open yourself up to that exposure. As such, as we would strongly recommend not only having an independent contractor agreement in place with everybody who's engaged in the development of your technological business, but you have it reviewed and designed by a knowledgeable and experienced technology lawyer, given that you're just not wanting to have some template off the internet and hope that it's more than adequate for the purposes that you're trying to achieve. The fact of the matter is, the template that you utilize may create its own series of problems and may not offer you the protections you're looking for. On top of the fact that all too often you might get a template that is not even related to the technology business. It might well be related to the construction business, somebody in the construction field, a consultant who's consulting on tax matters, um, a florist, um, a restaurant consultant, a roofer, a plumber, a, a whole series of different professions that Yes, they, they need independent contractor agreements, but their agreements do not address the key aspects of a technology business, especially the aspect of development of intellectual property and innovation that needs to all be transferred over to the company that's providing the consideration. As such, really consider the importance of having a knowledgeable and experienced technology lawyer working with you in developing and putting together the correct form of independent contract agreement. Finally, uh, we ask that you like this video if you found it informative and helpful, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and commenting on our YouTube videos as we continue to help yourselves and others with respect to their technology businesses as they move forward and meet the challenges in this highly competitive business market, as well as dealing with the challenges associated with dealing with individuals, business owners, business people, and even lawyers who are not well versed in the technology realm. And finally, if you are looking for that technology lawyer and you want to engage ourselves to provide you with that knowledge of representation, please do not hesitate to contact us. Our information is readily available, both on this YouTube video and on our website, with that information being available underneath our YouTube video and accessible. We hope you've enjoyed this particular YouTube video and found it informative, and we look forward to seeing you once again soon. Thank you.